Hey guys, this is a uh, response to a request on how to set up eTrade Pro as your day trading tool. Now, um, when you first start eTrade Pro, which you get for free, by the way, if um, you make enough trades per month through eTrade, I don't know how many it is per month, or maybe it's per quarter, but once you make enough trades, eTrade will send you an email and they'll say, hey, you can download Pro now. All you do is you open well, you download it first, uh, and you open it, and this is what you see the first time you open it. So I'm going to show you how I set it up for day trading, and it's pretty simple. First, I'm just going to minimize this. Now, uh, a couple things. One is you have all these screens down below. You're going to need to set them up with your charts and whatever you're trading with. Now, what I like to do is I set up screen one as my day trading candlestick screen, screen two as my... Uh, monthly candlestick screen and then screen 3 has the uh, options because I trade options so it has a list of options so I just use three screens now here's how you do it so select the screen you want to set up screen 1 here for me click this little tool um, symbol and then choose chart now obviously you're going to want to make it bigger and there you go Okay, so this is what's set up automatically. Um, the chart is 100 days daily candlesticks with volume on the bottom. I don't like those. I'm going to change it. Um, so how do you change it? Well, clearly, you can just change the days. And your tools here um, are what show up on, um, well, on the chart, obviously. Now, the studies are all the different indicators you're going to use. So if you're not going to use it, delete it. Now volume I don't need, so I'm going to go ahead and uncheck that. And now I got the candlesticks. And by the way, if you don't like the candlesticks, you can use something else. I use candlesticks. All right, so like I said, screen one, I set it up so that it's a 15-minute chart and just shows what happened today. All right. If you want shorter candlesticks, you can use shorter. I use 15 minutes. So that's what I got for the candlestick chart, and now I'm going to add my indicators. I'm going to add the two indicators I use most. Um, the first is slow stochastics, and the second is the directional movement indicators. All right. Now, obviously, they're taking up too much of the screen, so I'm just going to move these down, and I'll be able to see the candlesticks in a more clear fashion. All right, so that's pretty much how I have it set up. And as uh, the day goes on, these candlesticks will change. It's pretty good for day trading. You'll probably see the move. Not right now because people are at lunch, I guess. Um, but there you go. There's your daily chart. Now screen two, I'm going to put it up as the monthly chart because I like to have an idea of where things are going outside of the day. And I like to see if there are gaps within the candlestick chart. So I'm going to set up another chart. Maximize it. Do the same thing. Um, here I'm going to be using the monthly chart with daily candlesticks. So candlesticks are daily. Chart is 30 days. Again, I don't need this volume. Take that out. I'm going to put in the same tools. I'm going to put in the stochastics. I'm going to put in the directional indicators. And I'm going to move these down. All right, so there I got my daily. Now I can see the gaps between the days quite easily. I can see that how this candlestick moves. This is today's candlestick, and it'll move as time goes on. So you'll be able to see what it's like in the uh, daily perspective, moving outward. And you'll also see what that single candlestick, which shows up here, is like in terms of smaller candlesticks. All right, so those are your two charts. These are you can set up however you want. This is what I use for trading. Uh, my general strategy is to look for gaps and play those gaps. So here's QQQ. I wasn't trading the QQQ, but I was trading SPY yesterday. Um, I saw a gap between these two candlesticks, and I knew that the gap would fill. So at the end of the day yesterday, I uh, bought a SPY put option and. Now it's going to be profitable because it's going downward and filling. But 
When do you want to get in on these trades? Well, I use these candlesticks to find gaps or to look at candlestick patterns. For example, here's a um, bearish harami, and it'll tell you what the next candlestick is most likely to be. So if you see a bearish harami candlestick pattern, you know that the next one's probably to be downward, and it is. Now you see a bullish engulfing, and you know that the next candlestick is going to be upward. So these candlestick patterns can tell you what's coming next, and it'll give you a good idea as to when to get out. Also, the stochastics and the directional index will tell you, um, in general, where the momentum is during the day. Um, if it's above, if the stochastics are above 80, we don't see 80 yet, but if they're above 80 and then the green one falls below the red one, that's generally a symbol that the momentum's shifting downward. And if you have in the directional indices um, the red lines above the green line, that's a bearish indicator. And also you're going to have to look at this brown line because that tells you the strength. As the brown line goes down, which is going down in this case, um, you know that the momentum, whether it's bullish or bearish, is declining. So it's beginning to trend sideways. And if you're in a play that has high theta, um, if you're playing options, you generally want to get out when things start trending sideways. Now, once you've got your charts and you can make your analyses and you know what you want to do with a certain stock, you're going to need to make an order. So go ahead and click on this tool thing again. And all you want to do is go to order entry. And here's where you place the order. Now, I don't do it like this. You can if you're just playing stock. You just put in the order. And it's just like um, E-Trade's browser tool. But I play options, so I like to see a list of the options. So I just go to option chains. And now I've already, I already set, I don't think I've set this up. No, I haven't set it up. So I'll show you how to set it up. So here's the option chains. Now you can switch your symbol. Let's say you want to play Netflix. Hit enter, and it'll get all the option chains really quickly for you. And these will change as time goes by. It's, it's better than um, E-Trade's browser where you have to constantly refresh things. They will give you real-time changes. Now, whatever you want to play, you just select from here. I, when I'm day trading, I generally play either straightforward calls and puts or I play diagonal spreads. Um, because it's simple, I'm just going to show you how to play a put. All right. So select puts. It'll give you a list of all the puts for each expiration date. Now, if you want to play the weeklies, just play the weeklies. If you want to play the monthlies, go out to the monthlies. Um, now, here's something. I'm not sure if I set this up previously. I don't think so. Maybe I did. Um, but I'm going to show you how to set up everything you want to know about each option. All right. So let's say you want to look at a wider range of options. You can go to all, or you can go to 11. You can select your strike price. Let's say I want to do something that's really far in the money. So maybe I'll go to 95 and it'll show me all the options that are in the money. Now blue means in the money, black means not in the money. So we've got some in the money and out, out of the money. Now when I look at option, I like to look at the Greeks and you're seeing the Greeks here. But I don't think these automatically show up. If they do, that's great. Um, but if you want to see more stuff, right click, what I just did was right click, just right click anywhere, select display, sorry, select columns, and then whatever you want to see that's not there, you can highlight and click add. So I want to see open interest. I don't want to buy something with low open interest because it's going to be hard to fill. So I click on open interest and then I click on add and it brings it over to selected. Now, anything I don't care about, I don't really care about row, so I'm going to remove row. And uh, all of these other things I do care about, so I'm just going to click on OK. And you'll see now open interest appears. So anything you don't want, you just go to columns and select and click room, remove. Anything you do want, you click on available and then you just click add. All right. So that gives you everything you need to know. And again, if you want to move out to a different expiration date, just click on that and it'll automatically appear. Now, let's say I'm looking at Netflix. And I see, OK, during the day, it looks like it's overvalued and green is about to cross under red. It's time to buy my put option. I'm going to go in here 
I'm going to select my put option. Maybe I want the monthlies. So there's one with really high open interest. It might be worth buying just because the bid and ask spread are going to be closer. Actually, not really in this case. But um, let's say I want this one. So this is the 90 strike price. All you have to do is click it, left click it, and it'll appear down here in the order area. Now, automatically, it's going to show up as 10 contracts. Generally, I just do one contract, um, especially for these high-priced options, because one dollar downward in in price, which happens quite often with Netflix. Check this out. There you go. That's almost a dollar right there. But you know, from one, from two hours ago to now, it's already dropped about a dollar in price. And depending on your delta, that's going to bring you up. Right now, for this one, it would bring you up about 50 bucks. So you'd make 50 bucks on that one dollar drop within a couple hours. That's not a lot, especially compared to commissions. So you might want to do two contracts and make 100 bucks off that. It's really up to you. But um, it's automatically going to show up as 10 contracts, which is different from um, E-Trade, the browser version, because when you usually make an order, it shows up as one contract. Or I think it, you have to put it in yourself. But this automatically shows up at 10. Um, be careful with that. You might be buying 10 times as much as you really want. Now, because you've clicked on this, everything automatically gets filled. And if you want to change anything, you just change it by clicking and you know selecting what you want. Now, price type is going to automatically be limit. Um, if I play the SPY, for example, I just do market because the, the spreads are so tight, it really doesn't matter. But if you want to do limit, go ahead and do limit. Um, uh, OK, so if you do limit, what it looks like is it's showing up like I said I usually do market but it's showing up as the last price which is not what you want you want the midpoint and it doesn't automatically calculate the midpoint for some reason but I remember it has done so for me so let's try a vertical spread instead let's just select this one yeah and it shows you the midpoint for the vertical spreads so I guess um, E-Trade thinks you're too dumb to calculate it for the midpoint of the uh, uh, the the vertical spreads, but you're smart enough to calculate it for just a pure call or pure put. Don't know why, but it gives you the midpoint. So all you have to do is put in your price, put in your type, and then hit submit. Now there's a couple annoying things about E-Trade. One is this, when you accidentally move over, and this really pisses me off because it takes forever to go away. Take your time. Okay. Okay, so don't move your cursor over say, over that little eye thing over there near save order because that thing will show up and it'll block the submit button. Um, but here's what you do: you just put in your info, hit submit, and your order goes through, and now you got an order. Okay. Um, like I said, a couple of annoying things about this is when you hi when you move your cursor over things, things get highlighted and you can't click on screen two. Um, you can't click on submit if you accidentally move over eye. You have to wait which is really bad if you're day trading. And the third annoying thing is that E-Trade assumes that you're going to be clicking this to minimize. And sometimes when you when when you click that minimize and now you're browsing, you're browsing the web. Now you want to go back, well you got to go down, click E-Trade again, wait for it to appear, then you have to go click on this again. That's just really annoying. So, a better option is actually hit the Windows button on your keyboard and move over to your curb, your browser, do whatever you need to do. Hit the Windows button again, click on E-Trade. There you go, you're back in. That's a lot better for day trading. Uh, just less clicks to get back in. But I think that's pretty much it. Um, of course, if you want to use more screens, you can. I only use three. And then um, you got a lot more stuff you can add in here. I don't really use much of this stuff. I do like this program much better than things like Ninja Trader. I think it's more intuitive. Uh, it's faster to use, uh, and of course, there's a lot more options. Um, if you need this stuff, that's great, and I'm sure it's going to be very useful to you. But overall, after I started using E-Trade Pro, I only started using it recently, and um, it's certainly a lot better for day trading. But now I place all my trades, whether it's a day trade or a swing trade, through E-Trade Pro, mainly because you get these real-time, up-to-date estimates so when prices change you see them immediately you see that 
how it changed immediately. In the browser version, you have to click refresh, and you're getting the quotes that are 20 minutes old. So you're often making poor orders, not optimal orders, because you're making an order that's 20 minutes old. You're not getting the most up-to-date info. So make sure that if you are trading often in E-Trade, make sure that you download E-Trade Pro and start using it. You're probably going to save money simply by using this program. And uh, if you have any questions, please let me know. So like this video. Also subscribe if you want more videos about E-Trade Pro or anything else. And if you got a request, please place that request in the, call, in the comment section and I will get to it. That's it. Happy trading.